Okay, uh, small topic, but still which I want to discuss is PBR validator. Uh, PBR validator is something which I strongly recommend to use, uh, at least like a check for uh, your work. So if we go here, we have find PBR validator, it's standard one, and if you can just drag and drop here and everything is fine. So uh, you have two uh, ranges like 30 sRGB and 50 sRGB, and also the same for metallic like. In some studios, it's called like soft and hard limits. Um, okay, so why we have a uh, soft and hard limit regarding this one and how you need to read this uh, PBR validator. So uh, I would say like uh, 30 sRGB and uh, 60, 100 reflective should be almost like a must for you. Uh, there are some issues. Uh, for example, if you will gray metallic, uh, metal reflective range will not be like completely correct but overall like if you have something like that it's good uh it do not have yellow range almost do not have yellow range so as you see it's almost like have like green and red but it's not mean it's completely wrong if you are doing like 50 but everything is good with 30. so uh, why it's coming to something like that so right now we can look at this and we can think like how this can be too dark and if you will open uh base color values you will see that the asset in reality diffuse pretty dark and this is what's coming from experience i would say you understand what the value should be of your uh diffuse and a lot of people are doing diffuse very dark the reason for that uh in my opinion it's because how our eye react like we read dark tones much better than the light one and when we're pushing lightness higher we're feeling like it's becoming desaturated when in reality it's not uh, because you still need to understand the diffuse texture, base color texture, not important in our case. Uh, it's not photo. It's not picture. It's a graphical information for lighting to work with. So uh, let's let's update this one uh, because this is old asset. And I just want to switch to ACES because it will be closer to how it will be in Unreal. And you'll understand that it's not as light as you can think. Yeah, you see uh, this preset so old that it doesn't have anything. So let's go here. And now it's it's not looking so dark or light. You see, like it's becoming almost dark. But initially, my design for this asset like to be lighter. So uh, now this validator have a little bit more sense. Uh, so when I'm working, I'm doing with this validator. I'm doing like two, three small fixes. So one might fix its like uh, lightness and you just push it and believe me, your lighting art will be happy when you will do this because if you have better dimensions, like for you, it's not much like, but believe me for lighting, it, it can be an issue. Like this is the biggest part about uh, not proper PBR values. It's not about just rendering for you. It's about rendering for the whole studio and the whole pipeline. So yeah, update this proper way. Uh, your lighting guys will be happy uh, that you care about it. Uh, same going to the metal. So with metal, sometimes uh, let me uh, do preset. So uh, a lot of people I see work not correctly with metallic values. So if I will do something like that uh, and it will be full metallic, uh, black mask and we'll do something like that so you th you think it's like it's bright and PBR values saying like it's 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 really bright but let's do something like we're doing dark metal and you're doing like this and if you open PBR validator you see it's like in strict range it's already saying that it's too dark and you're like how is it possible how it possible that something like that is dark metal because this is a critical part regarding working with metal, you need to understand that metallic values should be really, really bright, even for dark metal. So this is something like iron or dark metal. It's, and if we'll go here to, uh, let me, every time I forget. So right, right now, this is like 149 sRGB. And in, when we're working with uh, dark metal, it should be 150, if I remember correctly. So I think if we will write something like that, uh, it will not be red 
Oh, I in this case it should be 170 if I remember. Yes, so you see 170, uh, it's not right in this, this is wrong. So like by default, by default, this is dark metal value. And this is so critical to understand because I see this mistake so often. And this is becoming an issue when you go into Unreal and you're saying like, my metallic not looking good, it's looking too dark. But it's not about this. You cannot believe as what you see in Painter, sadly, uh, because you're using very nice uh, tom uh, panorama or tomoko. Let's, let's use tomoko. So it's, it's giving you a lot of light, a lot of reflections. But when we are going to Unreal, it will not, for example, in Unreal, your metallic will not look like this in, in darkness. It will have much less reflections. And this is really important to understand that when we are talking about clean metallic, you cannot uh, remove context of the scene out of our like discussion. And that's why, as an environment artist, you need to learn to work with default values, uh, default look, because in some cases, your asset will be in bright values and metal will work, but sometimes it will be in dark values and your metal will look very bad and like almost a black spot. So how I'm fixing this when I'm working with something metallic and my... Uh, so this is like fixed for everything. Sometimes I'm doing like small uh, cheat. Uh, I'm doing like anchor point here, which I'm calling like final mask or something. And let's do this uh, metallic value especially dark. So it's, you see, like, looking so dark now, because, yeah, because our value is so low. You see, like, it's it's awful. Uh, just because right now we're using proper Studio Tomoko. Let me use Studio Tomoko. Okay, it's working the same. I have uh, EXR and HDR uh, Studio Tomoko, but as you see, no difference. So, uh, and we have this mask. So what I'm doing, I'm going to Brightness Contrast uh, Filter. Brightness, luminosity contrast. Maybe I'm forgetting how it's called. Yes, contrast luminosity, right. So we will place it here. Not here, but here, like as a, as a new uh, layer. And as a mask, we will be using our uh, final mask metallic. So our mask now is metallic values. So what I'm doing when I'm because like it's 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 okay that you're working in some cases like wrong, but you need to understand the final texture should be right. You can of course go and uh, push your values, but sometimes you want to not fix but react and fix some things. So uh, now we have mask and we can just push luminosity of this value, and of course we want to push only uh, color. So, and I'm doing something like that and pushing it to the values when I understand. And if you have, uh, why this is good? Because let's imagine that we have our uh, dirt, but we also have something like a rust on top. So I will move this here. And uh, just for this image, I will uh, change this rust halo with a uh, branch. Sorry, UV not, not great. Too small assets. So. Yeah, let, let's use something like that as a dirt. So now we have this. So uh, let's turn off PBR validator. And in our Rust, we want to remove metallic values. So now this is gray metallic. And this is what happened pretty often. So and when we are going to our contrast mask luminosity, when you're pushing your luminosity, uh, you can control it this way that you will be pushing values a little bit more contrasty, like something like that. So now I'm pushing values only for metal surfaces, but not pushing uh, lightness for my rust. Because if our rust will be full non-metallic, uh, I don't remember, is it possible to change it in this metal? Uh, let's do it with uh, fill metallic zero. I think it will be the best. And maybe let's do this mask a little bit even more contrasting. So now you have this. And this can be a very nice example how you need to work. Like, it's not perfect, I would not say it because like, uh, but from the values, you see like we're pretty correct because we have 
uh, like let's say this is like super super dirt here and it's non-metallic then you have like metallic surfaces and it's much brighter than you initially painted it so you fix it from PBR perspective so this is how I usually fix some things uh, with uh, this kind of stuff. Sometimes I'm using brightness and contrast luminosity just for everything. Uh, because uh, it's when, when you're pushing your lightness higher, let me show you. So when you're pushing uh, lightness, everything looking a little bit desaturated and you want to push light uh, saturation a bit. Uh, this is common thing, like again, from our eye perspective. Uh, but sometimes you're also losing just contrast and do not want to push uh, luminosity. In this case, I will be using contrast because you can do the same trick uh, with contrast luminosity. Let's turn it off here so you can have luminosity. But you, you see, you can look will be a little bit different. And in some cases, you want to try this one. Uh, true be told, I'm usually using HSL uh, for my fixes. But yeah, uh, that's what I wanted to say, and I hope it will help you understand how to work with this PBR validator. Uh, when you have a lot of assets uh, and different texture sets, you also can uh, click here and uh, is it here? Yeah, instance across texture sets. Right now we have only one texture set, that's why it's not activated. But when I'm working, I'm placing this PBR value. Uh, instancing it across all texture sets and like checking it sometimes to understand how it's working. 